<laughs> well, would you look who's here? Looks like it's going to be a day to remember. Guys, look who the sea washed up. Ahoy there, traveler. <laughs> so Captain really did invite you to join the homecoming celebration. Hey, I heard that you took care of another crisis while you were in Inazuma. Are the rumors true? That's what I heard, too. Thanks to you, Inazuma's vision hunt decree was finally put to an end. Well done, traveler. Captain's got quite the eye for people. She said she was sure that your trip to Inazuma would stir up some waves. And sure enough... <laughs> Look at you, being so modest. We all know what you did to protect Liyue Harbor. I've heard that they tell stories about you and Mondstadt, too. The Honorary Knight. Pretty impressive. <laughs> I'd say someone of your caliber would be right at home in the cracks. Right, sailors? <laughs> That's right. Wow, I'm getting excited just thinking of being the Traveler's crewmate. Hey, what do you say we arm wrestle? <laughs> I was worried you'd be too busy to show up. Oh, Captain on deck! Uh, Captain, we were just trying to talk the Traveler into joining the crew. Yeah, come on, Captain Beto. Surely you've got a way to get the Traveler on board. Well, she's on board right now for the celebration, isn't she? <laughs> yeah, but just one celebration together is not enough. You know what we mean, Captain. All right, all right, I get it now. There is something special about you, Traveler. You earned everyone's respect, myself included. So it goes without saying that the Crux would be honored to have a crew member such as yourself. No doubt about that. But then again, a hero like yourself doesn't just set off on a journey without some bigger purpose in mind. So should a hero really drop what they're doing just to spend day after day drifting at sea with us? Well, if that were the case, then the Crux, known for always moving forward to the next horizon, would instead be holding someone back. Right. Uh, I guess we didn't think that part through. Remember, rather than seeking out strong members to join us, you should be focusing on making yourselves the strongest that you can be. If we are powerful, they will come to us. Isn't that why everyone here chose to come aboard in the first place? Yes. A strong sailor is always looking for a sturdy ship. I guess I almost forgot the first lesson you ever taught me. Thanks for the reminder, Captain. <laughs> Just be sure you all keep that in mind. Now there's no more need to hound the Traveler, as you were. The Traveler and I have something to discuss. I'm glad you came. Welcome back aboard. Nah, hey, don't mention it. As a host, it would be pretty embarrassing to continue letting my guests be put on the spot like that. I can't go getting too caught up in my own reputation, though. That's certainly not how the Crux made it to where we are today. As the head of the fleet, my task is to keep us on the right course, no matter how turbulent the seas may become. But then again, the crew isn't usually this riled up. It's not that they're arrogant, they're just bubbling with ambition, that's all. Their excitement today comes from their great respect for you, both your strength and your character. So please, don't take it the wrong way. All good then, great. Actually, speaking of Inazuma, I think your good luck must have rubbed off on me on the way over. I made an interesting find on the beach shortly after we parted ways. Let's talk about it over there, where it's a little quieter. So after we dropped you off in Rito, we found a shipwreck nearby. Probably belonged to Inazuman pirates. We searched the wreckage and found a map. At first, I thought it was a nautical chart. I was thinking we might discover a new sailing route if we were lucky. But after a closer look, I realized it wasn't a map of the sea at all. It was a Liyue treasure map, and no ordinary one at that. Um... Nothing like that. 
I just mean that the map was a mess. So it was the most I could do to figure out that the treasure was probably in Lyra. As for its exact location, I have no idea. I'd say I've explored Liwa pretty extensively, but still, this one managed to beat me. So, I thought of you. Nobody can beat you when it comes to treasure hunting on land, right? Is that right? Well then, it looks like I'm in good hands. Here's the map, see what you can make of it. So, where do you think it is? Gwaley Plains. Huh, I never would have gotten that. How can you tell? Oh. Okay, then. So you do live up to the hype. <laughs> I can't believe you noticed that. You sure have an eye for detail. Let's head over there and take a look. I'll need you to help me zero in on the specific location once we're there. It should be around here, right? Hmm? Who are they? Oh, it's a bunch of treasure hoarders. <laughs> I guess the treasure's for real, then. There are quite a few of them. If things go south and fists start flying, stay behind me. I'm more than a match for these amateurs. <laughs> Keep digging, boys! Once we have our hands on the treasure, everyone gets a share! You can all hold it right there! Huh? Who's that barking orders? Do you know who you're up against here? Keep going if you got a death wish! Uh, what the... It's... It's... C -c captain B -B Beto! Run, boys! Run! Nobody move! Uh, captain Beto! Lord of the Ocean, this is all my fault. I didn't know who I was up against. I, I don't have a death wish, I swear. I got a big mouth is all. It's always saying things it shouldn't. I swear I'll wash it out with soap the moment I get back. Please, have mercy. Will you spare us? <laughs> <sighs> well, spare them, at least. These guys are just trying to put food in their mouths. They'd never hurt a soul. If you need to take anyone, take me. Please, let them go. It was me that disrespected you. They never did and never would. Is that right? Fine. Seems like you've got a heart in there somewhere, seeing how you treat your crew. I'll let you off the hook this time. Get out of here! Thank you, Captain Beto. Thank you. Wait. Yes? What else might the merciful and mighty Beto require? This treasure's still up for grabs. The Crux Fleet honors the rule of first come, first served. You found it first, so name your price. I can't have any rumors going around about Captain Beto stealing other people's treasure, can I? Captain Beto, we wouldn't dare take Mora from you. D take the treasure as an apology for my foolish words. Please, take it, please. Oh, well, if you insist. I accept your kind offer, and I'll make you one in return. You don't seem like terrible folks, so let me help you get onto the right track. If you want to mend your ways and put all this behind you, the Crux can probably arrange some odd jobs in the port for you. It'd be humble work, but at least it'd get you on your feet and making an honest living. A much better deal than what you've got going now, if you ask me. Wow, uh, thank you, Captain Beto. On behalf of me and all my boys. Right. Let's see what we've got in here. Uh, this isn't what we're looking for. Let's look around. Maybe we'll find it. Is 
Those rocks look kind of weird. Let's see if there's anything there. Nothing. Let's keep looking. What are those hilly trolls digging for? Wait, actually, I've heard they sometimes dig for buried treasure. Let's go take a closer look. Nope, not here either. <sighs> now that we've searched all the places of interest in this area and come up with nothing, uh, you got any ideas? It's a... Uh... Captain Beto! Captain Beto! Huh? Hey, what brings you back here? Captain Beto! Actually, we've just been wandering around nearby. We didn't go far... because we were thinking about what you said and... Well, me and the boys decided we're ready to move away from all of this and get on the straight and narrow. Oh? Are you sure? Yes. Absolutely sure. Okay, then. But I'll warn you right now, you won't have it easy. It might just be menial work in the port, but in the eyes of the general public, you'll be associates of the crux. So there'll be a grueling test you have to go through before you can start. I understand. I understand. Truth be told, Captain, it's only because it's you, the mighty and honorable Captain Beto. If it had been anyone else, I don't think I'd have listened. And since you made us this kind offer, I'd like to ask, if I might be so bold, is there any hope at all for us to become full members of the Crux in the future? Even the tiniest shred of hope? <laughs> well, there's no place in the Crux for delusions of grandeur, that's for sure. But... Then again, everybody has to start somewhere. So, it comes down to you. If you manage to impress me and earn the respect of my crew, then, yeah, nothing's impossible. Uh, thank you, Captain Beto. Thank you a thousand times over. I couldn't help but notice you were searching for something else. It still hasn't turned up. Why? Do you have any clues? We heard about two treasures, both in Gwaley Plains. We were still looking for the first one when you found us. So maybe the other one might be what you're looking for. Not too far from here, but I'm just not sure of the exact location. All the info we got about this treasure came from the black market. The answer's hidden inside a poem which goes like this. <clears throat> Drunkenly I gazed at the ruins long forsaken, and lay beneath red leaves whose branches cast a crooked shade. The dusk sun shone upon the sea as I awakened, but Guyan stood twixt weary eyes and the sight of home they crave. As for the ruins' long forsaken part, I do know of some ruins near here, but beyond that line, I just... I don't... <sighs> I'm just not smart enough. <laughs> so a treasure clue hidden in a poem, huh? Don't worry, we got this. See my friend here? If they taught treasure hunting as an art form, you'd probably be calling her Grandmaster. This kind of thing's a piece of cake for her. Am I right? <laughs> okay then. Let's start by heading to the site and surveying the scene. Maybe we'll find some other clues over there. Okay! Come on, boys! You heard the captain! Lead the way! Hip. 
These are the long forsaken ruins from the poem. Apparently they were once full of treasure. But judging by the state of them now, it's probably long gone. Hmm, it seems that we need to dig deeper into this poem. Drunkenly, I gazed at the ruins long forsaken, and lay beneath red leaves whose branches cast a crooked shade. The dusk sun shone upon the sea as I awakened, but Guyan stood twixt weary eyes and the sight of whom they crave. <sighs> Do you have any ideas? Ah, somewhere you can see the ruins from. So, somewhere not too far from here? Yeah, and maybe the shadow cast by the tree is supposed to hint at something. Oh, I got it! This guy fell asleep and woke up just before sunset! Dusk and the shadow of a red-leaved tree. Hmm, I think we can work with that. Let's take a look around. I think we're getting close. At long last, the treasure is finally in our hands. A check from the Northland Bank. You really came through. We found the spot in no time. Without your help, I don't think I ever would have gotten my hands on it. To us, this is just a check that you can exchange at Northland Bank for some Mora. But to some people, it's of huge importance. When I found the treasure map, it was tightly sealed inside a small bottle along with a letter. I'll let you read it for yourself. Finished? Yeah, I can't fault him for what he did, but the way things turned out... All I can say is, life is unpredictable. Well, let's fulfill his final wish by taking this check to where it belongs. Well, this is it. Oh boys, it's time for your first job! Give this check to the old lady who lives in that wooden hut. Tell her it's a welfare payment from the Liyue Ministry of Civil Affairs. Yes, boss! What's up? <laughs> I see. But you only find soccer blooms in certain places, right? It must have been quite a bit of work collecting all these, surely. Let's just pick one, huh? One's enough to show that you care. You've already helped me out so much today. Okay, off you go then. Take her the Sakura Bloom along with the check. And if she asks, tell her... Your child in a faraway land sends his best wishes. So after we dropped you off in Rito, we found a shipwreck nearby. Probably belonged to Inazuman pirates. We searched the wreckage and found a map. At first, I thought it was a nautical chart. I was thinking we might discover a new sailing route if we were lucky. But after a closer look, I realized it wasn't a map of the sea at all. It was a Liyue treasure map, and no ordinary one at that. Um, nothing like that. I just mean that the map was a mess. So it was the most I could do to figure out that the treasure was probably in Liyue. As for its exact location, I have no idea. I'd say I've explored Liyue pretty extensively, but still, this one managed to beat me. So, I thought of you. Nobody can beat you when it comes to treasure hunting on land, right? 
Is that right? <laughs> well then, it looks like I'm in good hands. Here's the map, see what you can make of it. So, where do you think it is? Chingta Village. I don't see the resemblance at all. How'd you come to that conclusion? Oh, okay then. I'm definitely a rookie at this. <laughs> but your word's good enough for me. Time for a trip to Chingta. You're coming with me, of course. I'll need you to help me zero in on the specific location once we're there. Ah, Pedro! Wow, and the traveler! My goodness, what's the occasion? Just here to visit us old folks once again? It hasn't been all that long since we last had a visit from the Crux. But I'm glad you picked today. You're just the people I need. These two young rascals. They've been arguing with each other non-stop about some petty nonsense or other. I'm too old to get through to them. They won't listen to me. Please, talk some sense into them. Rest assured, Granny Zhuoshin. Whatever the situation is, the Traveler and I will take care of it. Oh, thank goodness. It's Captain Beto. You couldn't have come at a better time. You're the voice of reason I need in this situation. Captain, please. Help me get justice. Whoa, hey, hey, hey. What exactly is going on here? Spit it out. Tell me everything. It makes me mad just talking about it. G here? I don't know if he's got a screw loose or what his problem is. But anyway, he took it upon himself to raise, well... Practically a whole army of finches, okay? And now guess what? They fly onto my land and completely destroy at least half of my crops. I asked him to pay compensation, but he refused. Now how is that fair? Captain, I'm innocent. They're not even my finches. I, I just thought they looked kind of cute, you know? So I fed them a couple of times. They're wild birds, though. A couple times? Are you kidding me? That's rich. Really rich. There were two of them when you first started. Two finches. Now you have a whole roof full of finch nests. I swear, every time I come by your place, I think I'm at a bird market. I'm telling you, you are not gonna get away with this anymore. So, yeah. I mean, they laid a few eggs, made a few nests, but finches gonna finch, you know. These are wild birds. I mean, they'll do whatever they please. So that's how it is. I think I got the picture. Hmm. What's your take? Hmm. Fair point. Granny Zhuoshin, is there anything left over from the relief funds delivered by the Crux on our last visit? Technically, this would be a case of avian damage to agriculture. It meets the relief criteria, so we can use these funds to cover Wenjing's losses. Why, yes. There is plenty left over. The Crux brings such a generous sum each time. There's no way our small village could ever use up all of it. Oh, thank you, Captain Beto. You can bet I never would have managed to get G to pay up, even if I spent my whole life trying to persuade him. Thank you, Captain. You can bet I never would have been able to afford the compensation out of my own pocket. I'll drive those finches away the moment I get back. I can't let them carry on ruining the neighbor's crops. Beto, you do so much for our village, and we could never hope to repay you. Granny Zhuoshin, as you know, many of the boys from your fine village do sterling work for the Crux. The fleet wouldn't be what it is today without them, so please think nothing of it. Gee, Wenjing, I guess you're free to go. Captain Beto, Captain Beto, you're here. Pop Shang, it's been a long time. How have you been? 
<sighs> Don't get me started. I've been having some real trouble with that neighbor of mine, Jen. We keep having the same argument, and it just goes nowhere. I heard you were in the village, so I rushed over to seek your help. What's the issue? Well, come with me. You'll see. Let's go find Jen and clear this whole thing up face to face. C -c Captain Beto, you're here. <laughs> I heard that you and Pop Shing had a little misunderstanding. So, what's up? Tell me about it. <sighs> Jen planted a tree on his property a few years back. I had no issue with it at the time. It's just a tree. But a few years on, it's grown taller than the roof of my house. Every morning when I get up and open the window, I just want to feel the sun on my face. But I'm greeted instead by the looming shadow of my neighbor's tree. It really affects my mood. I asked Jen to cut it down so I could get some sunlight back on my property. But he said no! <sighs> it's like he's done this on purpose just to drive me crazy. Captain Beto, you gotta believe me. I didn't intend to block the sunlight, but there's nothing I can do about it now. It's not just any old tree, you see. That tree was planted there by my late father. Not long after he planted it, he passed away. And just before he passed, he left me with some parting words. He said our family's fortune was inauspicious and we needed something to suppress the bad luck. That's what he planted the tree for. How can I just chop it down? I'll be honest, I spent a few years studying in Liyue Harbor, so I don't actually share his superstitious beliefs. But still, that doesn't change the fact that this was my father's dying wish. Okay, I think I'm all clear on the situation. What are you thinking? Hmm, I was thinking along the same lines as you. Look, Pops, I'm not trying to make excuses for Jen, but just try putting yourself in his shoes for a moment. Jen's desire to protect his tree isn't for money or because he wants to hurt anyone, or for the sake of any superstition. He just wants to honor his father's dying wish. Pops, you have kids too, right? <sighs> yeah, <sighs> when you put it like that. Pops, if you can agree to it, I'll have a word with Granny Zhuoshin and see about getting you some money from the relief fund, as compensation for having your sunlight blocked. As for the tree... Uh, that sounds good to me. Uh, whatever you think, Captain Beto. The tree can stay! Some compensation would make me feel much better about the whole thing. Thank you, Captain Beto. And thank you for understanding Pops Xing. I'll make sure to trim it back when I get home to let some more light through. It'll be such a relief not to have to worry about this anymore. On a separate note, I remember the Crux last visited the village not very long ago. Is there some special reason why you're back in person so soon? <laughs> Nothing all that special, just personal reasons. I'm looking for some treasure. Huh? Treasure? W wait a second. That reminds me, I saw Chong Ping and Defu arguing in the fields earlier. It, it, it sounded like they were both trying to lay claim to some treasure. I, I don't know if it's related to the one you're looking for, but but anyway, they're probably still there now. Really? Okay, well, you and Pop Shing can go about your business now. I'll go see what the situation is. Huh? Beto! You're just in time. Defu is being completely unreasonable. What happened? I'm not being unreasonable, Captain. I got Chung Ping to help me plow my land because it's the busy season. And then, what do you know, he plows up a treasure chest. Way I see it, it's my land, so the treasure belongs to me, right? I think it's a pretty clear-cut case. You say that, Defu. But what you're forgetting is that I came to help you plow your fields out of the goodness of my heart. And you haven't paid me a single mora. It was also my plowing that turned up this chest. However you cut it, surely I'm entitled to at least some of the treasure. <laughs> the domestic drama just keeps coming today. 
What are your thoughts? Okay, I think I'm up to speed here. If you two really want to take this further, I can get a legal expert from Liyue Harbor to adjudicate. As for the costs, I'll cover them. What do you think? Uh, uh... Neither of you seems thrilled about this course of action. Okay, so plan B. I'll be straight with you. The reason I came here today was to look for some treasure. Chances are it's hiding right there in the chest you're both fighting over. So how about you two stop fighting over it and do me a favor by handing it to me? Of course, I'll be indebted to both of you. If either of you ever needs anything in the future, the Crux will not hesitate to lend you our support. Captain, you're far too kind, really. Indebted? That won't be necessary. If you want this chest, you go ahead and take it. Yep, totally agree. If only I'd known you were looking for this chest. You should have said something. I would have delivered it to you personally to save you the trip. It seems like it's been quite a busy day for you, helping us settle all our little quarrels. Come on! Let's go to the village. I'll rally the masses. We'll get some good food and good drink and have a good old get together. Don't worry about the chest. I'll carry it over. What a fine day today has been. Beidou has solved an awful lot of problems in our village. She sure has. Without Captain Beto, that compensation payment would have bankrupted me. Yeah, and if it weren't for Captain Beto, I'd still be arguing with Pop's Xing. Hear, hear! We have plenty to thank Captain Beto for, I'm sure. I propose a toast in her honor. To Captain Beto. Cheers! I couldn't ask for more than the chance to get everyone together and drink to our heart's content. Cheers! That really hit the spot. Want to get some air? The view in this place is pretty good. We can take a look through the contents of that chest while we're at it. Chang Ping placed it by the water wheel. <laughs> Are you kidding? Beto can handle her liquor. Come on, come on, let's go. So, I've been thinking. Everyone seems to trust me enough to let me have the final word on their disputes. But don't you think some of my solutions can be a little stupid? You can laugh, I don't mind. Take Chungping and Dafu's wrangling over that chest, for instance. I had no clue who it should belong to, so I just came up with this stupid idea of taking it for myself. At least that way, neither of them would feel like it was unfair. But, I mean, I'm no Ningguang. I can't make a perfect deal every time. And I'm no Yanfei, either. Not all my judgment calls are going to be 100% fair and square. I am Beto, and my strength is in trading favors. <laughs> you think I should be more selective? Some people think their favors are so valuable that they need to plan out how and when to use them to maximize the return on their investment. They view the favor as a bargaining chip. Others see doing favors as a burden, not worth anything in monetary terms and prone to getting you locked in a cycle of constantly returning the favor back and forth. But the way I see it, favors are what keep people connected to one another. Over thousands of years, the people of Liyue have created bonds between each other by doing someone a favor here and asking for a favor there. This means that no individual is truly on their own out there. When someone falls down, there's an invisible net made of human connections, waiting to catch them and get them back on their feet. Over the years, I've come to owe favors to a great many people, and many other people have come to owe me one. These are the countless bonds between us, like so many fish in the sea. And they're the reason that the Crux and I have survived the countless hardships we faced. I believe that if there ever comes a day when the world is overrun by monsters, Liyue's legal system collapses and the land is thrust back into an age of war, it's these bonds that will see us all through the dark days ahead, until we come out on the other side.
I'm not saying that. But either way, we have a pretty firm bond between us already, don't you think? <laughs> Was this wind brewed in a winery? It's making me lightheaded. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Something we were literally just talking about. Oh, yeah, the chest! <laughs> oh, I got so immersed in our conversation that I forgot all about the main event. Come on, let's open it up and see what's inside. <laughs> oh, that's it? A whole lot of nothing? <laughs> it's not exactly what I was looking for. But you know what? I don't care. The fun part was going on a treasure hunt with you. Come on, let's get back to the party. Tonight, we go big before we go home. I'm glad you came. Welcome back aboard. Thanks. I'll take that. Some rumors have it that the leader of the Crux is so powerful that she could slay the mighty Leviathan Hyshawn without breaking a sweat. I can't go getting too caught up in my own reputation, though. That's certainly not how the Crux made it to where we are today. As the head of the fleet, my task is to keep us on the right course, no matter how turbulent the seas may become. But then again, the crew isn't usually this riled up. It's not that they're arrogant, they're just bubbling with ambition, that's all. Their excitement today comes from their great respect for you, both your strength and your character. So please, don't take it the wrong way. Oh, is that so? Well, it just so happens that we're doing some recruitment and training for new crew members while we're back. It'll be a first-rate chance to learn the life of a sailor. Since you're interested, why don't you come along and experience a sailor's life firsthand? I'm curious to see if you'll take the sea by storm in the same way you have on land. Good! Come with me. I've got something interesting for you to see. Chief Mate Juza's breaking in the newcomers, but I think we can spare you the tedium of that. After this, the new crew members will be arranged into two teams for more specialized training, according to their own aptitudes and the needs of the fleet. One team will learn comprehensive survival skills, including maritime emergency rescue, marine meteorology, psychological counseling, and so on. They will serve as the support team for the fleet, ensuring safe navigation. That's why we call them the Shield of the Crux. <laughs> That's right. You catch on quick. As one might expect, we call the other team the Spear of the Crux, because they'll be learning about naval warfare. They'll make up the armed portion of our crew. Also, they're responsible for handling the fleet's cargo deals. So, what do you think? Which team is for you? <laughs> you truly are an adventurer at heart. Let's start with the fundamentals for any armed crew member. Basic boat handling. Follow me. These are some older skirmish boats that we keep on the Alcor as backup. Although they've been made redundant by newer models, now they're still fully kitted out. They're perfect for when we need to do simulated battles as part of crew training. <laughs> Disappointed? So this isn't quite on the scale that you had in mind, huh? To be honest, the Alcor going into battle is the last thing I'd ever want to see. 
In fact, out of all the confrontations we've ever had, almost all were resolved by negotiation. Only when negotiations fail do we consider deploying our armed fighters and skirmish boats, and they alone are enough to handle most situations. The only reason the Alcor would ever need to open fire would be if it were a fight to the death. The Alcor serves only two purposes, to deter or to destroy. We are an armed fleet with a strong sense of justice, not war-hungry lunatics. We're very careful about determining when to use force and exactly what level of force to use. All of this to say that mastering a small attack craft is quite enough for new crew members. Do you have any experience piloting small armed vessels? You mean you can do the jobs of a helmsman and a gunner simultaneously? Wow, that's a, quite an achievement. Even in the crux, there are few who can do that. Seems like you're a natural. In that case, I'll skip the basics on how to operate your craft. The goal of this exercise is simple. Steer your skirmish boat along the prescribed route and return here within the time limit. You can start when you're ready. I'll be waiting here so I can observe your skills. Nicely done. That was a joy to watch. Perfect timing on the turns. You kept your craft stable on the straightaway. It was like watching a well-rehearsed show. <laughs> All right. It's high time I introduced you to some of the more serious business that the Crux takes on. Come with me. We're going to Liyue Harbor. You may be aware that as an armed fleet, the Crux is kind of like the maritime equivalent of a guard for hire. We work as an armed carrier, earning our keep by successfully delivering the goods entrusted to us from A to B. Aside from that, though, there is also one other important way we make income. Actually, it's trading in certain kinds of goods. Hey, my hotshot accountant. Nice of you to join us. <laughs> Cut it out, boss. Juza sent me here with a message. He says preparations are now underway. If you give me the all clear, I'll head straight over. Okay. Be careful. Well, she has something to take care of. Mora Grubber was right, though. The other important side to our business, the less official side, is doing exactly what merchants do. 
Importing here, exporting there. The only difference between us and regular merchants is that our transactions aren't entirely above board. You'll see what I mean by that shortly. I'm taking you to see one such transaction for yourself. Come on, let's go meet our trading partner for the day. Fresh seafood! Fresh seafood! Catch it while you can! What do you have? Hello there! Here at Nay's Professional Fishmongers, we've got everything you could ask for. So what do you need? I want a bass head with all the teeth removed. If there's a single tooth in there, I don't want it. Huh? You know bass have pharyngeal teeth, right? In the throat? How do you expect me to get all those out? Then I'll have a bass trunk with two swim bladders. Again, if it's short by one swim bladder, it's not the bass I want. You're not making this easy for me. One bass means one swim bladder. Afraid that's not up to me. Okay, then I'll take a bass tail with scales that are yellow on the outside, black on the inside. Also, it's gotta have a total of 81 scales. That's seven times seven, no more, no less. What kind of fish scales are yellow outside and black inside? You sure this is a fish you're talking about? In any case, you can try all you want, but 7 times 7 is never gonna get you 81. Pardon my asking, but you're not a fish expert, are you? <laughs> I'm sorry, ma'am, but uh, I'm afraid I don't have any of the things you're looking for. Look, I'm a professional. So are most of the people I serve. I can accommodate anything they ask for. Seems you two are amateurs. So I'm sorry, but you'll have to go someplace else. Anywhere you'd recommend? <laughs> like I said, Nay's professional fishmongers is for professionals. For amateurs, the place to go to would be wise amateur fishmongers. I bet you're wondering why that guy was saying he didn't have what we wanted. That was just the first step in the transaction, to confirm our identity. The real deal will come later. Fresh seafood! Fresh seafood! Come take a look! Is this wise amateur fishmongers? That's the one. We have all kinds of amateur stuff here. The more amateur, the more of it we got. What would you like? We'd like a bass head. No problem. Ours are all toothless, mind you. And a bass trunk. Oh, no problem. I'll stick an extra swim bladder in there for you. On the house. And a tail. Sure thing. I'll paint the scales yellow on the outside and black on the inside, so you can tell at a glance, this ain't no ordinary fishtail. If it's seven times seven you want, I can do you 81, 138, or even 648. It's up to you. Great. I like your style. We have a deal. 
I appreciate your patronage. Please, take your order to our warehouse manager over there. <laughs> a real amateur, if I've ever met one. Proud to have you as a customer. No, we don't have the fish here. All fish sold at Wise Amateur Fishmongers are still swimming in the sea. Once we get the order in from the customer, we go fish it out for them. The warehouse handles that side of things. Pay first, then we bring you the goods. That way you get the freshest catch! Are you two here to collect your order, huh, Bade? <clears throat> yes, sir. We're here about that bass. I didn't expect you to come in person, but we still need to follow procedure. The bass you want is not a standard specimen. Our fishermen need to wait for the right moment to catch it. You know the rules, I take it? Of course. Oh. <laughs> Well, as you know, timing and location are everything when it comes to fishing. You have to wait till all the conditions are just right. That means the tide, the moon, and the wind. So, let me ask you this. When will the tide come in? The fishing song will sound out at midnight. How drunk will the moon be before the party's over? It won't stop while the Star of Death shines. I see, yes. Uh, which way will the sea breeze be blowing? The breeze should be bound for Guyon. All right, then. Well received. I'll go and make arrangements. Uh, <clears throat> Great. I think that wraps up everything we needed to do in Liyue Harbor. Let's head back and wait for the delivery. The three people we just met are our business partners. Nay's professional fishmongers and wise amateur fishmongers are just cover names. The bass, obviously, is the code name for the goods. The numbers of teeth, swim bladders, and scales all represent different specifications. Meanwhile, the conversation I had with the warehouse keeper was the instructions for the deal itself. Let me translate it for you. Tonight at midnight, the deal will take place in Guyan Stone Forest. The Alcor will wait there as long as needed. As for what the actual goods are, well, you'll see tonight. What if I were to say yes? What would you do then? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but don't worry, everything will be fine. I deeply value you as a friend, but ultimately, you're not with the crux. I definitely don't want to cause you any trouble just because you hung out with me. So rest assured, we haven't broken any laws. <laughs> At least not today. Captain Beto. You gave me quite the surprise when you showed up in person earlier today. Well, my friend is visiting, so I wanted to show her how the Crux handles some of its important business. I see. Hmm, you two must be close. You got that right. Now, down to business. Have you brought the goods? Yep, all here. Please, feel free to take stock. Stop. Nobody move. We have received certain information pertaining to a potential illegal business transaction at this location. Apologies, Captain Beto, but I'm going to need to inspect those goods. Oh? An illegal business transaction, you say? Well, all the goods are here. If you have any suspicions, please inspect them at your leisure. C captain everything's been checked. It's just a bunch of potatoes, flour, and so on. And all the paperwork checks out, too. 
Huh? Everything's been checked thrice over. There's not a single contraband item here. The paperwork was approved by the Ministry of Civil Affairs and the tax declarations are all in order. Looks like you've managed to clear everything up. I suppose we can put this down as a simple misunderstanding. Yes, uh, apologies. This was a mistake on our end. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Bravo, Captain Beto. This was rather ingenious. Seems like your friend still has a little catching up to do. <laughs> I know you have a lot of questions. Come on, take a walk with me and I'll lay it all out for you. Well, I'll leave you both to it. Captain Beto, I look forward to doing business with you again. Take care. You probably thought that there was some sort of nefarious business going on behind all the secrecy today. The truth is, that was exactly what I wanted the Ministry of Civil Affairs to believe. What you might not know is that I, as the leader of the Crux fleet, and you, the great hero of Liyue Harbor, have both been on the Ministry of Civil Affairs watch list for a long time. In other words, whenever you or I crop up in Liyue Harbor, it almost always draws their attention. Not that there's any animosity behind it, mind you. In their words, it's a security precaution to prevent people like us from causing unnecessary trouble. <laughs> oh, I have no qualms about that. They're just doing their job, keeping the land safe. But, how does that saying go again? Ah, yes. Sometimes, the closer you are to something, the less you can see. Did you figure it out yet? That's right, Mora Grubber, the accountant. With you, me, and a few sacks of potatoes and flour serving as a front, the deal she's overseeing on her end should go off without a hitch. After all, the Ministry of Civil Affairs sent the Millilith to us. Looking at the time, it should be any second now. Look, that's the signal. <laughs> Tonight's real deal is a... Do you have any more questions? You're right. Never underestimate her. But as long as we don't take things too far, she won't look into it too closely. She knows that neither you nor I would do anything to harm Liyue. In any case, there's another higher level watch list at the Ministry of Civil Affairs above the one we're on. It's top secret. Even I don't know whose names are on it. But I do know that the individuals and organizations on that list are the ones the Qixing are really wary of. <laughs> I've gotten off topic. On some level, Ningguang and I are actually business partners too. Reason being... I'm the only one who can get her some of the more obscure treasures she wants. It's... complicated. All you need to know is that what might be easily attainable for some people can often be a lifesaver for others who can't get their hands on it. That's where we come in. It's as simple as that. <laughs> you still have some important things to take care of, don't you? As long as you don't know what I was referring to, you'll be safe. So, I'm sorry, but I can't tell you for now. Of course, if the day comes when you've traveled to every corner of the world, found your sibling, and neatly tied up all your loose ends along the way, you're welcome to come back here and I'll tell you all about it. You'll always be welcome in the Crux fleet. I hope I get to see you on board again someday. Chief Mate Juza's breaking in the newcomers, but I think we can spare you the tedium of that. After this, the new crew members will be arranged into two teams for more specialized training, according to their own aptitudes and the needs of the fleet. One team will learn comprehensive survival skills, including maritime emergency rescue, marine meteorology, psychological counseling, and so on. 
They will serve as the support team for the fleet, ensuring safe navigation. That's why we call them the Shield of the Crux. The Pen of the Crux? <laughs> oh, that's a wild idea. Unfortunately, this ain't the Wan Wen Bookhouse, kid. As one might expect, we call the other team the Spear of the Crux, because they'll be learning about naval warfare. They'll make up the armed portion of our crew. Also, they're responsible for handling the fleet's cargo deals. So, what do you think? Which team is for you? <laughs> As I expected, you have a will to protect others. There are two main subjects that the Shield of the Crux focuses on. Survival knowledge and entertainment. As I was saying earlier, survival knowledge includes prevention of injuries and diseases at sea, navigation and cartography, basic meteorology, etc. You can go learn about these skills from Yinxing, Hoixing, and Liu They're all seasoned hands in their respective fields. Each sailor has their own strengths and weaknesses. I'm no rookie, of course, but you shouldn't underestimate the knowledge of the crew. If there's anything I'm most proud of in the fleet, it's my people. Go and get to work. I'll have some questions to test you later. <laughs> I look forward to seeing how you do. Hello, Traveler. I'm Yinxing, the Crux's surgeon at sea. Whenever a sailor has a health problem, they come to me. I deal with it all, from seasickness and common colds to amputations and everything in between. Oh, I presume the captain arranged this, correct? All right then, let's begin. First of all, let me ask you this. What do you think is the biggest danger that all new crew members face? Hmm... That can certainly be a problem at sea, but it's not the biggest danger. The most dangerous thing for a newcomer is to underestimate the dangers of life at sea. Oh, I have seen many new crew members who see themselves as young and fighting fit and have no regard for safety. They think that since they are tough enough to look after themselves on land, they'll be fine at sea as well. Those are the ones that always end up in the sick bay. Everyone should know that being a sailor, especially on a long voyage, is a brutal job in an unforgiving environment. We have to face malnutrition when we're short on supplies, all kinds of injuries and diseases that the harsh ocean weather can bring and even the psychological problems that can arise due to isolation and the lack of entertainment. To make things worse, the lack of medication and treatment options at sea can result in even minor health problems becoming serious or even fatal. Oh, you probably thought I was joking, right? Well, that's not surprising. Most newcomers think the same way. But hopefully you now realize that with a little extra precaution, a lot of these things can be avoided. Well, I think that's enough for you to think over for now. Is there anything else you would like to know? Captain Beto? Well, out of everyone I've met, she probably values people's lives and safety the most. Although I'm just a doctor, Beto has given me the full authority to send any newcomers who I don't see as fit for service off the ship, until they are ready to come back with the right attitude. Every time we're stocking up before a voyage, medicine takes top priority. I'm even allowed to choose the suppliers, regardless of the price. We have adequate budget for medical expenses. Do you know what Mora Grubber, our bookkeeper, calls this? A significant financial risk. <laughs> but Beto knows the importance of having a healthy crew. That's why she has authorized me regardless. She places her full trust in me and believes that I can solve these problems. 
Of course. I have proven her right. So, to answer your question, that's how she thinks. Is there anything else you would like to know? Hmm. Huh. Are you concerned about them? No wonder Captain Beto thinks you're different. There must be more to you than just your strength. If you can convince Mora Grubber to show you the books, you'll see there is a regular fixed cost, titled Convalescence Payments and Incapacity Support for Injured Crew Members. Regardless of the fleet's income, those who have fought alongside us will certainly receive their compensation every year. Some of those that have returned to land have started small businesses, while others have chosen to go out traveling the world. The money is intended to allow them to live their lives as freely as possible. I'm sure being based on land helps a lot with that, too. Still, we can't pretend like it solves everything. They call them life-changing injuries for a reason, you know. But, if nothing else, it's good to know that while Captain Beto is in charge of the Crux, no one will get forgotten. Is there anything else you would like to know? Well, wow. <laughs> my pleasure. Okay, let's leave it there then. Be sure to take good care of your health. The waves are as calm as always. Sorry about earlier, Traveler. We were so caught up on getting you to join the fleet that we didn't notice we were going a little overboard. Good thing the captain stepped in. Oh! Well, in that case, you have come to the right person. I'm not just blowing smoke. You're looking at the most talented navigator in Liyue Harbor. I'll start by introducing some chart reading essentials for new sailors. Feel free to interrupt if you have any questions. Let's start with what to look for when you get a set of complicated charts. First, you should always look at any indicated shorelines, islands or reefs, water depths, hydrological conditions, and other hazards. With these features in mind, you can answer the basic question of, can I chart a safe course through this area? Visually, nautical charts are a little unique. Unlike land maps, most charts do not have a fixed scale, which means that it can be hard to precisely determine the exact distance between two points. The most advanced nautical charts come with a supplementary chart, which has different colored lines marked on it to indicate distances. It's worth mentioning that under my direction, the crux is using these advanced kinds of charts. Some cartographers mark out other points of interest on their charts, usually with their own special symbols. If they don't leave any accompanying notes, they can be very difficult to interpret. <laughs> Not only those, we have tattered and torn charts that we've picked up from all over the place. To be honest, it can be quite a challenge, even for me. Some of these charts are really old and have symbols that I've never seen before. But if we don't decipher them, we will certainly miss many secrets of the sea. Fortunately, we have the captain with us. She managed to find some ancient books on semiotics that I can use to study the charts further. I don't think anyone other than our captain can manage to get these kinds of resources. Old charts and ancient books on semiotics are not the kinds of things that are sold in your average marketplace. Oops, I've gotten off topic. <laughs> well, that just about covers the basics of chart reading. Is there anything else you would like to know, Traveler? Drafting charts? That's certainly a more advanced topic. To be honest, I've only attained a smattering of knowledge in that area. The charts we are using now are just revised versions of the ones left by the previous navigator. So my mapping experiences have been primarily limited to updating our charts to reflect changes in the sea. I think you can ask Captain Beto more about cartography. One time, the fleet sailed into an uncharted area by mistake. It wasn't long before we turned the fleet around and returned the way we came out for fear of potential hazards. But Captain Beto still managed to draft a simple chart of the area we sailed through for if and when we explore the area again. Incredible, isn't it? I was amazed to see that the captain could even do cartography. Because I have the talent, and she doesn't want to let it go to waste. <laughs> she treats the whole crew that way. I initially had the same question myself. 
After all, in many fleets, the captain also works as a navigator. I couldn't understand her reasoning at the time, so I asked her. She just laughed and told me to wise up, saying that even Rex Lapis never fights alone. She wants everyone on board to master their role, so that the crux is not floating on her alone. That way, if the day ever comes when she's no longer with the fleet, we will still be able to sail onward without her. Captain Beto may seem aloof and even act careless sometimes, but the truth is that she's very considerate of everyone on board. Is there anything else you would like to know, Traveler? My pleasure. A friend of Captain Beto is a friend of mine. Hello, Traveler. Are you here to learn about marine meteorology? <laughs> In my line of work, I've got to have a pair of sharp eyes. I saw the captain showing you around the training grounds, and then you went to see Yingxing and Huixing. So I figured that she probably wants you to get to know the life of a crew member. <laughs> okay, let's get started. First, I'll introduce you to the basics of meteorology. Marine meteorology basically means keeping tabs on the weather as well as other ocean phenomena, so things like sea fog, storm surges, water spouts, and so on. These are all potential threats to safe navigation. Luckily, whatever weather might be coming up, there's always some kind of sign that gives it away in advance. Take water spouts, for example. They're caused by high-speed rotating winds on the surface of the ocean, they can engulf large ships and do immense damage. But if you know that water spouts can only form in an environment with high temperature, high humidity, and large clouds, then you can be well prepared. You will be even more alert if you also know that the presence of winds blowing in opposite directions with a significant difference in speed is a direct precursor to the formation of water spouts. And most importantly, if you spot a small white vortex emerging from the clouds, you should immediately notify the crew to steer clear of what's ahead. So there you go. Those are the warning signs of water spouts. I am proud to say that over the years, I haven't let a single one sneak up on my watch. Well, I'm good at reading the sea, but I'm not as good as the captain when it comes to reading people. Do you know the small fishing village next to Wang Shuin? I heard that when Captain was a kid, she worked there fishing with the adults. Later, she made her way to the harbor where she struggled to make a living. <laughs> Managing to survive in an environment like that as a kid is solid proof of the captain's capabilities. If it wasn't for her, I never would have dreamed of taking this job. She gave me confidence and told me I could do it. You may not have heard, but I'm best known outside the Crux fleet for a slightly infamous story involving me third round knockout, and a few too many. Who would ever have thought that the rookie sailor who fell drunk into the sea and became a laughingstock among their now former crewmates would then go on to become a lookout for the crux? But it's the unbelievable truth. <laughs> it proves that having skills alone is not enough. You need someone like the captain who is a good judge of character. Find me anytime if you want to know more. So you've already finished talking to the crew, huh? <laughs> I thought it would take you a while longer. So, what did you think? <laughs> now you know that the Shield of the Crux is not such an easy job. Let's get started. First of all, life on the sea isn't always plain sailing. Injuries and illnesses happen all the time. But what is the single biggest danger facing crew members? Hmm? Is that your final answer? <laughs> all right, on to the second question. As you've just learned, the fleet plots its route using nautical charts. The charts used by the Crux have additional charts attached. 
The supplementary chart has lots of lines in various colors for added reference. What is the purpose of these lines? Okay, interesting, interesting. Now, last question. On longer voyages, we have to be especially careful to avoid certain weather hazards that pose a threat to the integrity of the ship and the lives of the crew. For example, water spouts. So my question is, how can we reliably predict water spouts so we can avoid them? Okay, those are all my questions. Do you want to know how you did? <laughs> I gotta say, each time I think I've wrapped my head around how great you are, you surprise me with something new. You got them all correct. They weren't the most difficult questions, but they weren't ones you could bluff your way through, either. You've clearly been paying attention to my crew. Okay then, now it's time to apply that endless talent of yours to learning some new recreational activities. You need to realize that being out at sea might be fun for the first few days while everything's new, but before too long... Looking at the same old sea every day and being so isolated from everything can really cause people to struggle mentally. That is why regular recreational activities are an absolute necessity. We offer a lot of fun courses for our newcomer training, including fishing, photography, chess... Oh, and thanks to Kazuha, these days we also offer poetry and music appreciation, as well as communal wind listening. Each newcomer has to participate in at least one, so that they've got some way of keeping themselves occupied at sea further down the line. Of course, if you'd prefer wrestling sea monsters with your bare hands, that can be arranged. <laughs> Well, for today, at least, let's stick to the training schedule drawn up by Juza. If I remember correctly, it should be photography today. Come on, I'll show you. Listen up! Everyone can go back and call it a day. The photography session has been postponed. What's going on here, Juza? Oh, Captain, there you are. Well, Captain, the photography teacher just sent word saying that she's fallen ill and doesn't want to risk coming in in case she keels over in class. I see. That's quite unfortunate. Oh? <laughs> quite the multi-talented one, aren't you? In that case, why don't you help us out and lead the class today? Yeah, unfortunately, the original teacher canceled at short notice, so there's no time to schedule anything else instead. It would be great if the Traveler could step in as the teacher for the day. It's up to you, Traveler. Great, it's settled then. Juza, let's muster everyone over here to meet the new teacher. Yes, Captain. Okay, that's one, two, three, oh. That should be everyone. Take it away, Traveler. Oh yeah? What's that? Fair enough. It seems like you already have someone in mind. So, who will it be? Me? <laughs> well, well, we could do that, or... Guyonstone Forest looks extraordinary today. It'd be a pity to not capture the scenery for posterity. 
So how about we snap Guggenstone 4s for today's class? Then there'd be no need for a model. <laughs> Come on, Captain. We talked about this. The photography class is supposed to be portrait photography. Have you forgotten? Scenery looks nice at first, but it gets boring after a while. I bet it'd keep the crew more entertained if we got them learning portrait photography so they could record moments in each other's daily lives. Those were your exact words, Captain. <laughs> were they now? <laughs> Strange. I don't seem to remember anything about that. Well, then in that case, how about Huixing? I bet she's perfect for the camera. Or Fuzhong. Or Mora Grubber. Even Little Yue. Seriously, Captain? Little Yue? You're just trying to wriggle your way out of this. This isn't like you. You are the captain, after all. Of all of us, you're the best suited to being a model. I agree. You were the one who invited the Traveler to be the teacher, so you should cooperate, Captain. Besides, Captain, you've never had your photo taken. It's high time you got one. You know, a heroic and striking kind of picture. We can even use it to promote the fleet during recruitment. <laughs> Real funny, guys. Well, if you say so. I'm not one to spoil the fun. <sighs> So, what do I do now, Traveler? Uh, hmm. uh like this? <laughs> You're kidding, right? I've never had my photo taken before, but something this simple shouldn't be a challenge for me. It must be the lighting or something. You've got it wrong. <clears throat> I never said that. You mean, go somewhere else than bring the final photo back as teaching material? Sounds good to me. <laughs> That's a good idea, isn't it, guys? Hmm. The lighting may still be a problem. But I'm open to persuasion. If you have a suitable place in mind, I can consider it. Just to be clear... I won't necessarily agree. It depends on the place you have in mind. Well, Miao Guang Shoal is pretty relaxing. But if I want to enjoy the ocean breeze, why don't I just stay on board the Alcor and enjoy the breeze with my crew? That'd be more fun if you ask me. So, I think we can just forget the whole modeling thing for now. Sorry about that. I guess I'll owe you a favor. The fishing village near Wangshu Inn? That place is deserted now, isn't it? How do you even know that place anyway? It's tiny. I don't think I've ever seen it on a single map. I'm surprised that you remember such a trivial detail. He's right, though. I did live there for a while. And now that you've mentioned it, it's given me the urge to go back and take a look around. Well then, let's go. We can take this opportunity to pay my old Tom a visit. Certainly seen better days. It was never that impressive, but at least back in the day, it was a lively village and home to several families. I wonder how long these last few old houses will remain standing. Nothing as dramatic as you might think. A few small incidents occurred, and then people began to leave. Come on, let's take a walk around. People used to call this place Downriver because the villagers apparently moved here from a place called Upriver. With them, they brought their knowledge of fishing, which had been passed down from generation to generation. I learned a lot from them when I was here. 
Now upriver is long gone, and downriver is all but deserted. It won't be long before no one even remembers what these places are called. Tu Zhong. Zhong? Hmm. I barely remember this name. You're right. I was only about five or six years old when I first arrived here. I was homeless and had to wander around the streets. I remember finally managing to find half a rice bun, but then a stray dog jumped out and snatched it away from me. <laughs> half a rice bun was not something I was willing to give up so easily at the time, so I chased it all the way to this neighborhood. Then a few fishermen saw us running and stopped me. They were kind enough to give me some food. Seeing me stop, the dog also stopped running. But straight away it keeled over and never got up again. Maybe it was too tired, or maybe it had starved to death. I went over and saw that the dog still had the half rice bun in its mouth. It didn't let go even at the very end. <sighs> Poor thing. Had I known the dog was so weak, I would have let it take that half rice bun. I could tell they were wary of me at first. I was the dirty little kid who had just chased a dog to death over some scraps of food. But I got lucky. The village chief took pity on me and brought me to their home. That's how I ended up staying here. <laughs> Do you know what the name Beto means? Come on, I'll explain along the way. About a year or two after I arrived, the village chief fell ill during the winter and passed away. During that same period, the harvest was getting worse, and the fisherman's catch was getting smaller day by day. Without the village chief to handle the situation, people began blaming each other. There were even rumors that some families had been overfishing and leaving nothing for the rest of the village to catch. But in the end, they all turned on me, saying that they shouldn't have ever taken me in. They said I was bad luck. They pointed to how that dog died on the first day I arrived. Next thing you know, the village chief dies, and then all the fish die out. They said I was a living curse, and the downfall of the village was all my fault. I told them that I didn't understand. I'm not a curse, I'm just Beto. Then some of the villagers started shouting, and drove me out of the village. They shouted, Nando controls life. Beto controls death. Beto controls death. Before then, all I knew about my name was that it had something to do with the stars. It wasn't until then that I realized that Beto was a constellation. And the Alcor, one of its stars, was an omen of death. Here we are. This is the old house of the village, Chief. I bet he never expected that the little girl he took in would grow up to be seen as a curse that brought about the village's total destruction. What do you mean? <laughs> is that all? And let me guess, you got to Inazuma and the Electro Archon's Gnosis was taken as well? <laughs> well, you seem to wreak havoc on a grander scale than I ever could. <laughs> oh, I get it. You're trying to convince me that I'm not cursed. I appreciate it, and I'll take it. Let's not forget that the people whose names stick around are the ones who emerge from the stormy seas unscathed. And the ones who get swept away in the wind are the fledgling birds who couldn't hack it. I, for one, have never encountered a storm I couldn't weather. But your journey's far from over, isn't it? Just remember, there's no telling what else you might encounter in this vast world. So if you ever find some idiot trying to brand you as a scapegoat just because you're the one who lived to tell the tale, tell them Captain Beto demands to have the honor along with you. Remember, You'll always have the Captain of the Crux to back you up wherever you go. <laughs> Tu 
two cursed scapegoats banding together for survival. Sounds like a recipe for disaster, but at the same time, I kind of dig it. I'm lucky to have a friend like you. Okay, it's time to get back to our photography. Right, teacher? Come on, let's not waste any time. Get it done while you can before I change my mind. So, do I need to strike a pose? All right, how about this? So, is it done yet? Please don't tell me that it looks weird. Show me! Yeah, sure, whatever. Now give it here! Hmm... Yes... I see... All right. On behalf of the Crux, thank you very much for your photography class today. You've been an excellent teacher, and I couldn't be more satisfied. Now, as Captain of the Crux, I am exercising my official right to requisition this photograph for future promotion and recruitment purposes. <laughs> so I'm afraid I'll be holding on to this. That's fine with you, though, right? <laughs> Here we are. This is the old house of the village chief. I bet he never expected that the little girl he took in would grow up to be seen as a curse that brought about the village's total destruction. What do you mean? <laughs> is that all? And let me guess. You got to Inazuma and the Electro Archon's Gnosis was taken as well? <laughs> Well, you seem to wreak havoc on a grander scale than I ever could. <laughs> oh, I get it. You're trying to convince me that I'm not cursed. I appreciate it, and I'll take it. Let's not forget that the people whose names stick around are the ones who emerge from the stormy seas unscathed, and the ones who get swept away in the wind are the fledgling birds who couldn't hack it. I, for one, have never encountered a storm I couldn't weather. But your journey's far from over, isn't it? Just remember, there's no telling what else you might encounter in this vast world. So if you ever find some idiot trying to brand you as a scapegoat just because you're the one who lived to tell the tale, tell them Captain Beto demands to have the honor along with you. Remember, you'll always have the Captain of the Crux to back you up wherever you go. <laughs> Two cursed scapegoats banding together for survival. Sounds like a recipe for disaster, but at the same time... I kind of dig it. I'm lucky to have a friend like you. Okay, it's time to get back to our photography. Right, teacher? Come on, let's not waste any time. Get it done while you can before I change my mind. So, do I need to strike a pose? What? The nerve! What do you think this is? I don't want to do this whole modeling thing. Hey, cut it out! No more pictures! <laughs> 